Hi and welcome to a new video here on my channel. Today we will finally talk about the port 80 debug LED which I developed together with Elmore. We basically made those to make our life a lot easier when it comes to debugging and testing because those debug LEDs are nowadays unfortunately not present anymore on every motherboard. Especially when it comes to testing cheaper motherboards such as for example this is a Gigabyte H370M. You can see there is no debug LED on there so whenever you try to um, start up your system and you might have for example memory detection error it, it's really difficult to debug without having a debug LED and with those small devices you can attach them directly to the mainboard using the TPM header. Um, it works for all mainboard man manufacturers so it works for Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock. It's compatible to all of them as long as the TPM header is present. Back in the days we always had those kind of devices for PCI so we had a card that could be plugged into a PCI port. Um, nowadays we don't have PCI anymore, it's all replaced with PCI Express, so we cannot use those cards anymore, that's why we decided to make our own. The product itself is pretty simple, so we have the PCB which contains the small LED which will show the debug code eventually. Top left side we have the connector for the cable that goes to the mainboard. On top right side we have two connectors for power and reset, obviously we have to connect those to the motherboard as well. So we have the power and reset button and the one at a connector on the bottom you can uh, neglect because that's made for firmware flashing of the controller. When it comes to the cables we decided to make two different sizes. So we have the short ones and we have long ones. Those are the small cables to connect the power and reset buttons to your mainboard and it really depends on how you want to test the debug card or how you want to use it. Personally um, I'm really a friend of having those attached somewhere to bench tables that's why I'm a friend of using the long cables so I can somehow move it around the bench table to a very user-friendly position but some of you already said in the comments in the previous videos that it might also be useful to have short cables if you want to place the debug module directly inside your case that's why we'll, we will supply two different sizes. Same goes for the mainboard connecting cables. So we have three in total, even though it's compatible to all four big um, vendors. So we have one cable for SROC, we have one for MSI, and we have one for ASUS and Gigabyte combined. And as I said before, it's compatible to all mainboards that have the TPM header. I checked most of the mainboards we had at Case King in stock, and it really looks like most of the boards, even the very cheap ones, have the TPM header on there. For example, like the B450M here from MSI, it's a fairly cheap board and even this one has the TPM header here on the bottom. It also doesn't matter if it's an Intel or if it's an AMD board, it works on both of them. You just have to pick the right cable and connect it to the correct pinout. The current plan is that this video will go online on Wednesday, so today should be Wednesday for you and then this product should also be available at Case King. We only made 200 pieces for now, so it's a fairly kind of ultra low volume product because it's mainly made for enthusiasts, people like me um, who really like to test a lot and uh, yeah if you're testing a lot especially when it comes to cheaper boards and you don't have the debug module it's sometimes really frustrating to figure out what is wrong like is the VGA not detected or is the memory not detected should I update the BIOS or whatever is wrong it's really useful to have the debug code um, module and that's also why it's priced at around 35 euro and as I said before, we only have 200 pieces for now. So I will move the camera a little bit closer to the table and then I will show you how you can connect the debug module to the TPM header because it's really important that you use the right cable and also connect it in the correct direction. Then we will also do some testing like um, just set up a system uh, without a memory module and see how it affects the debug code so you can get an idea of how this thing works. So I will quickly explain how this debug LED works in combination with this ASRock board which is uh, H370 Pro 4. Of course we will do the same again afterwards with MSI, Gigabyte and ASUS but we will just start with the ASRock board now so you get an idea how it works. First take the cable for reset and power. I take the red one for reset so it matches the buttons and then take the black one for the power button. And then we take the mainboard connecting cable which is labeled at the correct side. You can see the top side is labeled connect to mainboard. You can also see that the connector size is different to the size on the debug LED so it would clearly not fit. So we have to take the other side and make sure it correctly aligns with the debug module pinout. 
On the top side you can see the pins are marked with 1 and 2, so this indicates the pinout of the debug LED with 1 and 2. And on the cable side we have grey and red which are also 1 and 2, so really make sure that you take the correct side of the cable and connect it to 1 and 2 with the grey and red side first. Otherwise it might damage your debug card or even your mainboard, so just make sure this is aligned correctly. Now we will connect the debug module to the front panel connector of your mainboard. Luckily nowadays those are also labeled on the mainboard directly so you can see there is power button and reset here. So we take the black one and connect it to the power button. Um, obviously the pinout or direction doesn't matter because it's simply a button and then we take the red one and connect it to the reset button and then we are already set for power and reset. So now we take a look at the TPM header on this ASRock board which is labeled TPMS1 here in this case and you can already see if you take a look at the connector from the cable and compare it to the connector size of the TPMS1 on the mainboard that it's a completely different size so we really have to be sure to connect it to the correct position. On ASRock you have this empty pin here on this position which helps to indicate the correct direction of the cable and the empty pin has to go to the two empty spots of the cable which you can see on the right side here. So it might sound a little bit complicated but simply just connect the cable with the two empty spots to the one empty slot on the pinout of the TPM connector. Make sure that on the, right, uh, on the left side you have the green and the yellow cable. On the right side you should have the red cable. So I quickly set it up in a very basic configuration with CPU, memory, 24 pin connected and the 8 pin EPS connected. So it's a very basic setup without a GPU because it's not needed to test it now. It's connected to the PSU so we will simply power it on now and see what the debug module shows us. Basically whatever code you're getting now you can compare it to the codes that you can see in your mainboard manual and wherever it stops you can maybe check it with the codes in the mainboard manual or go to, go to some forums and discuss what might be wrong. A typical mistake I've seen several times, it might sound really stupid but I've often seen the mistake that the EPS connector was not plugged correctly either on the mainboard side or it was not correctly plugged on the PSU side which happens more often than you think. So we'll just power it off now, remove the EPS connector power it back on and you can see now it's showing zero, zero, which is basically telling us that the system is not powering on at all, basically because the CPU is not supplied with any voltage. So let's move over to this MSI board which is a B450M, it means that it's an AMD chipset. So again we take the debug card, I already attached the short MSI cable, I left the power and reset buttons on there. And on the MSI board we have the JTPM1 and on the right side you can see four pins then there is one empty pin and the empty pin gives us an idea of the correct direction of the cable. If you see it in this direction make sure that the yellow cable goes to the top left side. So simply plug it like this and you can see that the red cable goes to the bottom right side to so just make sure that you have the correct direction of the pin in this case as well. So let's move over to this Gigabyte board with Intel chipset. Again on the bottom you can see the TPM header and on the right side you can see two rows with pins and then there's an empty pin and this side indicates where the pin 1 goes on the Gigabyte TPM header. So for Gigabyte make sure that you take the cable in the direction with the grey cable pointing to the top right to pin 1 and then simply connect it and you will straight see that the connector is one pin shorter so you should have two empty pins on the header of the mainboard left after connecting the cable. So let's move over to our final board for today which is an Asus C390 Strix and in my opinion is a perfect example of a board that's in a price range where it's fairly expensive and this kind of board should actually have a debug LED, I'm not sure why it doesn't come with one but even here on the bottom we have the TPM header so we can of course use this debug LED module also for this product. The TPM header on ASUS shows an empty pin on here which tells us that the pin 1 for the TPM header is on the top right and similar to the Gigabyte we have to use the grey cable for pin 1 so simply connect it here very similar to Gigabyte and after connecting we still have two unpopulated rows of pins to the left. 
So again, we perform a quick test. So I set it up with the Asus Strix motherboard, again, in a very basic configuration. So you can see with just CPU, one memory stick, and the power attached, no VGA. So we can simply power it on, and now you can see all the debug codes. Again, if you encounter any problems, for example, if your memory is training not correctly, you will see it on the debug code here. So you can either double check in the manual of the motherboard, or you just go to some forums and yeah, ask some people on there if they can help you with the debug code. Maybe you can already find some information about that online. So if you have any kind of questions, leave it in the comment down below. In the description, you can find a detailed link to the manual of the pinout. See you soon.